everyone. In this video, we'll explore how Specmatic can help perform contract testing on your gRPC service. Let's start by looking at the architecture of our application. We have three components, a client, a BFF, and a backend domain service. All these components communicate using the gRPC protocol. Now, we want to contract test the BFF service in isolation. Let's see how Specmatic can assist us do exactly that. In test mode, Specmatic replaces the client and acts as a client to make the request to the BFF service. Specmatic also replaces the backend domain service with a gRPC stub, which is a true representation of the backend domain service. With this setup, BFF can now be tested in isolation by Specmatic. Now that we understand the setup, let's dive into a quick demo. This is the contract test that I have written for BFF service using Specmatic. Let me directly run this. Whoa, we got a bunch of tests here. The test names say order service slash find available products, create order, create product. All these sound like RPC methods. Actually, let's confirm that by looking at the proto file of the BFF service. Oh yes, we can see those RPC methods over here. So it seems the tests are testing the RPC methods provided by the BFF service, which is what a contract test is supposed to do. Let's explore one of these RPC methods to try and understand those tests. Let's focus on create order. This method expects a new order in the request and returns order ID in the response. If you look at new order, it contains product ID and count fields. These fields also have some validation rules. For example, the count is the required field and it must be in the range of 2 to 200. These validations are introduced using the well-known proto validate library. If we look at order ID, it's simple. It just has the ID field with a required validation. Now that we understand the create order RPC method, let's look at the tests associated with it. Let's look at the first test. It says sending request to localhost 8080, which is where the BFF service is running. In the request, we have a product ID and a count which is within the range as specified in the specification, if you look at that. So this makes this request a valid request. We then see a log which says received request order service slash add order. What does this mean? If I go back to the architecture diagram, we see that BFF service is talking to a backend domain service using a gRPC protocol. So this order service slash add order is an RPC call made by BFF service to the backend domain service. So does that mean in our contractors, the BFF service requires the domain service to be up locally? No, not really. If you look at the test mode, domain service is replaced with the gRPC stub by Specmatic. What is this stub? This stub is basically a server based on the specification file of the domain service, which makes it a true representation of the backend domain service. Since PFF service is talking to the stub instead of the real domain service, it makes the tests fast and efficient. With this, you can understand the power of Specmatic. We have isolated the BFF service completely from the services it depends on. So the gRPC stub receives this request and then it responds with this. And finally, BFF service is returning a response with some ID value, which again, if we look at that is a valid response as per the schema, as per the specification. We finally see the result as passed. So we can conclude that this test calls this RPC method with a valid request and expects a response with a valid schema back. Let's now look at a failed test. This one is a negative scenario as per the test name. 
The test name also has some extra information around the mutation that's been done as part of this test. Since these tests are inspired by the mutation-based testing, we see the presence of the term mutation here. The test name says mutation count value lesser than the minimum value 2. And if you look at the request, that's what it is. The request has a value which is lesser than the minimum value 2. This makes this request an invalid request. Since this is an invalid request, Pegmatic now expects an invalid response to be returned. However, if I scroll down, we got a valid response back, which means our service is missing the necessary validations. Hence, Pegmatic has rightly identified these issues and failed the test. If we look at the error logs, they say expected key named error code and expected key named error message, but all of them are missing uh, because it's not present in the response. That implies this test was expecting an error to be written from this from the invalid request that we have sent, but it got a success response instead. So that is good. This test is testing a negative scenario and thereby testing the RPC method's resiliency. Let's just look at one more failing test. In this test, the required field product ID is removed. As per the spec, product ID is supposed to be required, but we are testing a scenario where this field is missing. Uh, if we look at the request, there is no product ID as expected. And if we scroll down, we see this test is failing as well. Let's see why this test is failing. The error log says error code expected 3 actually was 13. So we are getting an error code 13. We can also see over here, which is the status code for internal error. But the test is expecting an error code 3, which is the status code for invalid argument. And that's why the failure. Thus, as a developer, you don't need to worry about accidentally missing all these scenarios. Specmatic has got your back covered. If we look at the test, we have a bunch of such tests for other RPC methods too, as you can see. Thus, these tests are checking the resiliency and correctness of the RPC methods, ensuring the application behaves as per the specification. Okay. Let me now fix the failing tests by adding the missing validation. Give me a moment. And we are back. I'll fix the validations. Uh, let me just rerun the test now. Awesome. All the tests are passing. Okay. We now understand what these tests are testing. Let's now explore how these tests are written. Let me expand the contract tests. Oh, where are the tests? I can just see the setup and teardown methods here. The thing is, we don't have to write a single test. Specmatic generates all those tests using the specification file. That's awesome, isn't it? Having as good as 56 tests without writing a single line of code. Let's go through these methods now. If I open this, in the setup method, we are setting the host and port system properties which lets the Specmatic know where to send the request to. We are also turning on this Specmatic generate to test flag which tells Specmatic to generate the test testing the negative scenarios. We then see we are creating a gRPC stub and starting it in the teardown method we are simply stopping that stub. Okay, earlier I mentioned that Specmatic generates the test and stub based on the specification files. But where is that configured? I don't see that here. For that, we must look at the specmatic.yaml file. This file is also referred to as specmatic configuration file, where you can configure all the necessary stuff specmatic needs to operate. This is the spec that the BFF service is based off, and these are the specs which define the RPC methods that the BFF service is dependent on. This is how we tell Specmatic which specs to use to create the stuff, 
and which specs to use to generate the tests against the PFF service. Thus, with this pragmatic configuration and a minimal contract test setup, we can efficiently test the resiliency of the RPC methods provided by our gRPC service. In this way, Specmatic helps you ensure compliance with the API contracts, detect integration issues early, simplify testing by eliminating the need to run dependent services, and enhance confidence in the stability of your microservices. This is Specmatic gRPC for you. You can try this out on your own by clicking the link in the description. If you are impressed with this, please consider giving a star to Specmatic on GitHub by using another link in the description. Thank you for watching.